Here we have a report about Google Classroom usage made with Class Reporter. And you can access different pages within this report uh, by using the menu on the left hand side if that's not open. If it's open you can see the pages that you can flick to. So we've got work details and we've got student engagement. So let's start on the teacher usage page. From here we can see an overview of teacher usage and we can change the date range. So clicking on the drop down we can set the dates to a, a number of different pre-selected date options. So for example this year to date. Click on apply and then all of the tables and charts will update to show information from that date range. If you've got multiple organisations within your domain, you can select an individual organisation or school and see just the information from that, or you can select multiple organisations. It's also possible to drill down into this information. So for example, we could click on an individual teacher and see an overview of the work that's been set just by that one teacher. To clear that filter, just click on the arrow at the top and then you can see the information from all teachers again. And to clear the organisation filter, just click on the top box which will select all organisations. So let's head over to the work details page. On this page you can see the information for each of the assignments, questions or announcements that have been posted. And we can see we've got quite a few posts here because we're looking at the information from all dates from this year. We can change the date filter again. So for example, we could just look at the posts that have been created in the last week. Click on apply and you'll see a much smaller number of posts. Again, we can filter down this information so you could look for posts created by an individual teacher. And rather than searching through the whole list, if you deselect all teachers, and then use the search feature to type in the name of a teacher that you'd like to look into. Tick that teacher, and then you can see just the posts from that one teacher. And again, the other filters will continue to work in exactly the same way, so organization and class name. You can add multiple teachers. If you're, for example, head of department and you're looking at the teachers in your department, you can select those and see the types of posts that have been created. You can also search by class, so you can do this in exactly the same way, deselect all the classes, use the search to type part of that class name. So if your classes are, have a, a code description to them, you can type in the subject code and then select classes within that subject. All these filters work together, so if you don't see all the options you expect, try changing the date range. So for example, if we look at the last month into the last week, then we'll see more options available because some posts have been created from those classes within that date range. So again, we'll type in our search for our subject and we can see that we've got extra options here that we didn't see before within that smaller date range. So moving on to the student engagement page, this is where we can see the information about the work that students have done or that they've not done. Again, we have filters for the date range and organization, and we can see class names. So for example, we could drill down into an individual organization, and see there's just the students from that one organization, or we could select multiple organizations in much the same way as we could with the other pages. I'm gonna stick this one to all organizations and look at it as a, as a whole group. We can, drill down into the age groups. So again, we can we can unselect one or we can select only that one year group and we can add in additional year groups if necessary. And the charts that you can see are sortable as well. So you just need to click on the heading for a particular column and the information will be sorted. So for example, if we click on missing in the student table, we'll see these students ordered by the most missing work. We can then click on individual students and we can see the classes that that student is a part of. And we can also see the work that that student has been set. And then we can click on an individual class and see just the work that's been set in that one class for that one student. So this is a really good way to drill down and find exactly 
you know, where these problems are and where the issues may be that need to be addressed. We can compare different classes and see how they compare with each other, whether a student's doing work in one class but not another. Again, to clear the filters, just click on the curved arrow at the top and that will undo the filter for that one table. And we can see we've still got a filter applied to the class table. So if we clear that filter as well, then we'll be back to the whole list of students and whole list of classes. It's also possible to look at this from a class point of view. So if we sort by missing on the class table, then we'll see the classes with the most missing work. So we can click on this class and see the students in that class and how many pieces of work that they have done or are missing for that one class. And we can see for this class, most students have not completed all the work. We can see the teacher name by clicking on the teacher filter. And there's only one option there because we've clicked on one class. So we know the name of that teacher now. So if we then filter for that teacher by first clearing all of the teachers and then typing in that name, we can select that teacher and see all the classes taught by that one teacher. And we can see we've got a bit of a mix here. So we can see some work has been completed, uh, but we've also got some, some key issues with particular classes. So what you might like to do here is find a, a buddy or a, a colleague that this teacher could work with. So let's add in all the teachers back again. And this time we're gonna sort by class on the done column to find classes that have had most work completed. So in this case, we've got a, a maths class and we've got the name of the teacher there. And um, so we can use that information to pair up these two teachers and see if one teacher can help the other by supporting them and passing on that good practice. There's plenty of other ways that you can use these reports. You just need to look at the filters that you can apply and dig down into that information that you need.